gratitude meditation. Gratitude is a prerequisite for happiness. Uh, it's even more than that, actually. Happiness is a fruitage of gratitude, meaning if you want to be happy, which most people do, then you need to cultivate gratitude. You will need to have gratitude in order to get to the place of being happy. So one man I was uh, mentoring, uh, this was, I was in my 20s and he was probably late teens at the time or early 20s at the time. And I asked him, uh, what do you want out of life? And he sat back in the seat and he says, I just want to be happy. And this same mindset is the mindset that many people have around the world and still have today. But the key to happiness is not to pursue it as some end goal, but to recognize that you can have it today. But we have to make the choice to be happy. And so if happiness is a choice, does that mean we can just flip a switch? Yes, to a degree. So if there's a switch that you can flip, it would be kind of like your ability to flip on a generator and then that generator creates an engine or gets the engine moving and then the engine will create the electricity, right? So we can flip on the generator of happiness. And what is that? Well, your generator of happiness is gratitude. When you cultivate gratitude, when you get into the mindset, or as I say, the attitude of gratitude, then you're able to reap the fruitage, the benefits, the rewards, which is happiness. Again, happiness is not the end goal. So when we say, I will be happy when I get this car or when I get this house, I will be happy when I get this wife or this husband or have these kids or get a dog all of that is false because that's not how happiness works. Happiness does not come upon you when you obtain something or when you accomplish something. Of course, we can have momentary joy, but the joy you are experiencing is not because you obtained something or because you accomplished something. For instance, isn't it possible for a person to obtain something or accomplish something without feeling happy at the end of it? Haven't you ever obtained anything without feeling happy? Of course. Maybe you've even gone to the grocery store, bought some groceries. Did you feel overjoyed when you picked up the milk or when you got eggs? No, not necessarily. Some of us did. But the reason you might not have felt elated with happiness when you picked up the milk or when you picked up the eggs was because that was not something to you that made you feel exceedingly grateful. Perhaps to you, your, your obtaining of this object was just something that met your expectations. So how are you going to feel happy when something just barely met the, the, the minimum of your expectations? Of course, we can obtain things that are negative as well. And when you obtain something that's negative, uh, like, uh, who was that that said that? Like Nikki said, you can obtain a speeding ticket. <laughs> and yes, that's true. If you obtain a speeding ticket, you're not going to be happy, right? And so where are we getting the correlation of happiness and obtaining things? Well, when you were a kid, you used to get things occasionally, hopefully you got some gifts, and you would be happy if you got that gift or you got that thing. Or even in your young adulthood, you would obtain something and you would feel happy when you obtained it. You would feel this joy. It was a sensation inside of your body. It was an emotion that, that, that came over you. But what really is this? If we break down and we break apart the components of what really happened, it wasn't what you obtained or that you obtained that made you happy. It was that you felt gratitude for what you had accomplished or obtained. The key to the happiness is the gratitude. The, the switch that you can flip is flipping on the attitude of gratitude, which starts the engine 
that creates the happiness, like electricity. Happiness is like an energy, right? It's an emotion, but it's created through cultivating the attitude of gratitude, right? So you have to make the decision that I'm going to focus on gratitude. It's so important in order for us to feel happy, to be happy. Also, in order for us to not have mental health issues or to have improved mental health, to have enhanced relationships, to have physical health benefits, to have more uh, resilience, to have a better sense of well-being, we need gratitude. So gratitude is what? Gratitude is defined as the quality of being thankful and appreciative of the good things in one's life. Gratitude is the quality of being thankful and appreciative of the good things in one's life, big and small. It involves recognizing and acknowledging the positive aspects of life, as well as expressing appreciation for the kindness, support, and blessings received from others or from your universe. Have you ever received anything that you could be grateful for? Give that question some thought. Every human has received something they could be grateful for. How about even life itself? But do you feel grateful for what you've received? That's the question. It's not, do I have anything to be grateful for? It's, do I feel grateful for what I have received? The etymology of the word gratitude is that it comes from the Latin word gratitudo, which means thankfulness. Do you have a thankful attitude? Do you have a thankful attitude? Are you someone who goes around receiving things without saying thank you? One of the first lessons that you may have learned in childhood, parents, that's the first thing they teach, right? One of the first things, once you're speaking, say, say, thank you. As soon as you receive something, say, say, thank you. But saying thank you is way deeper than being polite. Saying thank you is cultivating an attitude of thankfulness to actually have grace. The Latin word gratis means pleasing, thankful. The concept of gratitude has roots in various cultures and philosophies through history, emphasizing importance of acknowledging and appreciating the blessings or the goodness in one's life. What has your universe given you? What have you received? Do you offer prayers of gratitude? Do you meditate? Do you do gratitude meditation in which you cultivate this attitude of gratitude in your mind? Admittedly, it can be difficult for many of us to cultivate the gratitude as simple as it is because we all want the happiness and it seems so complicated to get it, but I just broke down very simply how you get it. Flip on the switch. What's the switch? The generator is the attitude of gratitude. You just flip the switch. In other words, you just start thinking about things you're grateful for or thinking about how you're grateful for things. And then what happens? All of a sudden, you get the produce. The electricity from the generator is the, the happiness. Did you catch how to get happiness? I'll try to make it more simple. If you're grateful, you will be happy. That's pretty simple, right? So why isn't it easy? What could be what you've been through in your life? That's keeping you from having that attitude of gratitude. Maybe you didn't learn it from your parents. Maybe, 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 maybe you you were hurt. Someone did something to you. Maybe you were abused. And so now you're switched on in hyper arousal or hyper vigilance. If you're in a heightened state of alertness, constantly searching and scanning, you're scanning for what? All the things you're grateful for? No, <laughs> you're scanning for all the potential threats because you want to know what's going to go wrong? What are the negatives? And with your mind focused and fixed on all the negatives, you're failing to cultivate gratitude. And we wonder why we're not happy. Or do you have negativity bias in which you focus on all the negatives? 
if we're operating in our survival mind and our trauma brain, then you do. Then you do. It's just a normal thing to have a focus on all the negative because we think that if we focus on the negative, the bad, that's how we can keep ourselves safe. But our predilection for keeping ourselves safe is keeping us sad, depressed, anxious, and unhappy. You cannot be happy when you're looking at all of the bad and focusing on all the bad. When you have negative thinking patterns, when you can't shift your focus away from the potential threats to the positive aspects of life. That's not an attitude of gratitude. That's an attitude of scared. Trauma survivors struggle with emotional dysregulation. And so when they have intense, overwhelming emotions, it overshadows the positive experiences and the positive things that hinders the development of gratitude. Does that make sense? Gratitude is maturity. Do you realize that? That's why you're taught as a child to be thankful. Gratitude is maturity. To continue to be thankful as an adult means that you have emotional maturity. You're able to look at a situation and say, I am grateful for the positive in this situation. I am grateful for the lesson learned through this trial. That takes maturity. You can't develop that maturity when you are stuck in emotional dysregulation and dysfunction. It stunts your growth. If you have trust issues, then you're looking at the world scanning for the next potential threat. And so even if you meet a person who is generous with you, your idea toward that person is that inevitably the worst thing is coming. So then you can't cultivate any gratitude toward the person because you're too busy distrusting them, which is really just trusting that they will hurt you. But we have to learn to accept that in life, there are things we cannot control, but we can focus on what is to our benefit, and that is what we do control. When you're too busy focused on what you cannot control, you lose control of the things you could control. Again, when you're too busy focused on what you cannot control, other people's actions, other people's emotions, other people's responsibilities, powers what they could do to you in the future that you can't control. When you're focused on that, you lose control over your thoughts and your emotions, which would be something that you would be able to, to handle, to care for. So we have to regulate our emotions by focusing the mind on what we can control. We can't be happy if we don't feel any sense of power. We don't focus on where we have power. We can't be happy if we feel like everything is unacceptable. Some trauma survivors are focused on shame and guilt. They have such a hyper uh, focus on their own self that they're thinking that everyone is thinking something bad about them. And so they feel like, I don't belong, I'm not good enough, no one wants me, nobody cares about me. And so they have the shame of guilt, the shame and the guilt. I am wrong, I did something wrong, I'm not good enough, what I did is not good enough. What is that? It's just focusing on the negative. Because there's things about you that are right. Because your worthiness is undeniable, but you're not focusing on that. Focusing on all the negative. So instead of being in shame and guilt, we want to have healthy pride that we cultivate and be able to recognize, to detach ourselves from any mistakes that we may have made and not take on blame that doesn't really belong to us because it will rob us of our happiness and we cannot have that because our mental health depends on happiness, on our ability to maintain the attitude of gratitude. Some people are stuck in the traumatic memories Having flashbacks and intrusive thoughts, of course, can rob you of your gratitude and your happiness. So what should we do? We have to practice creating the neural pathways in the brain that lend itself to focusing on the future and the present, the things that we can control. 
We have to practice focusing on the future and the present, the things that we can control. When we do that, we can get out of reliving, ruminating on, flashbacking to all of the things that are out of our control. So when you examine yourself, what do you think is holding you back from cultivating the attitude of gratitude? There's a lot of different things we can do to develop an attitude of gratitude. But ultimately, by the end of this call tonight, you want to make sure you make the necessary change to become a very, very grateful, very meditative person. And that's why we're going to talk about gratitude meditation. But I don't want you just to do a meditation. That's not going to solve the problem. You need to become a grateful, meditative person. Does that make sense? You need to become a grateful, meditative person, someone who's thinking all the time about the things that they are thankful for. Some people like to keep a gratitude journal. Write down the things every day that we are grateful for. That's a good thing to do. Now, for the life of me, I don't think I could keep hold of one book for very long that I'm writing it. I will inevitably lose it, right? So maybe you can keep a note file in your phone, things I'm grateful for. And from time to time, add to that note file. It's like a, a book of blessings. Expressing thanks to others is good. But when's the last time you thanked yourself? When's the last time you thanked yourself for the good decisions that you've made? Because believe it or not, and as inconvenient as this may sound, you haven't made all bad decisions. Believe it or not, you've made some good decisions that have kept you alive up until this point. You're not a total failure. When's the last time you thanked yourself for that? We don't just want to say a prayer. We want to be prayerful. We want to be a spiritual person, connecting with something that's higher than you and being thankful for what you have received, although you may not have deserved it, helps you to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. We can practice generosity with others. We can engage in volunteer work. After all, there's more happiness in giving, right? But this idea of gratitude is not more complicated than, than it sounds. You don't have to have a lot. You don't have to have accomplished a lot in order to have gratitude. You just simply need to look at what you do have and focus on seeing it from an angle of well, I guess you could say glass is half full or how is this to my benefit? Why, why is this good for me? So we have to look at things from an angle of undeservedness, thankfulness, all in a positive way to feed ourselves with that attitude of gratitude. So imagine a man wakes up in the morning and he gets up. Ah, uh, darn it. It's Monday. <laughs> Is that cultivating an attitude of gratitude? Uh, I'm so stiff, he says. This is the way he's thinking. He shuffles into his bathroom. Scoot, 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 scoot. Grabs his toothbrush, looks in the mirror. Ah, uh, I'm so ugly. Puts toothpaste on. Oh, man, I'm almost out of toothpaste. Someone left the cap off of this. He starts brushing his teeth and finishes doing that. He goes to grab himself something to eat. Oh, man, I'm almost out of time. I'm going to be late now. Great. It's probably going to be traffic. He grabs himself a Pop-Tart. Eats half of it, 
uh, I never get to just have a good breakfast. He gets in his car. He goes in the traffic. Oh, my God. I knew it. This is horrible. <laughs> you see the mindset of this man? If he keeps going like this, he goes to work and he's, uh, and he gets to work. Oh, uh, if he doesn't get work, uh, if he, he, go, he comes home. Oh, I'm tired. I don't, right. Do you think if he continues like this, he will ultimately have happiness in his life? Do you think he will even be happy today? Do you know someone like that? Are you someone like that? Do you think like that? Focus on all the negative. We'll cut it out. Cut it. This is the thing we have control over. This is the part where we have control. This man has a lot to be grateful for. Now imagine he watches this talk here and he says, you know what? I need to fix my attitude. I'm going to make a change. And so he wakes up the next morning and he does this. He says, I get to. And so I was waking up. First thought is, oh, it's Tuesday. And then he thinks, wait a second. Attitude of gratitude. What can I be grateful for? And he says, well, mm, Mm, I get to live another day. Took him a minute, but he found something. I get to live another day. And he notices what? The sun is shining. There's sun coming in through his blinds. Ordinarily, he would be angry because the sun is getting in his eyes while he's trying to sleep. But this time he feels differently about the sun. And he opens his blinds and the sunlight pours in. He gets a little vitamin D and he swings into the bathroom, brushes his teeth. He notices we need more toothpaste. So he adds it to his list. He kisses his loved ones. Good morning. He grabs a something quick on the way out of the door, some instant oatmeal or a muffin. And as he does it, he's saying, this is something I get to have. Wow, I'm low on time, but I have enough time to get a muffin and have some oatmeal. I get to have a muffin. I get to have some oatmeal. And then he gets in his car and he goes, I have a car. This is amazing. This is awesome. I have a car. I have a lot to be grateful for. And so now his car ride is different. He turns on the radio to his favorite tunes or his favorite talk show. And he starts cruising down the road and he hits the traffic. And he says, now, what am I going to do now? Because now I'm in traffic and I don't want this to make me late for work. And he thinks, what can I be grateful for? What can I? Well, I have traffic because I live in a city. And I live in a city because that's where I wanted to live. I wanted to be by the restaurants. I wanted to be close to work. I wanted to be able to, to have people around. I didn't want to live in the country. That's why I have traffic. I'm grateful that all these people are here, although it would be nice if some of us would carpool. I'm happy. I'm happy that I live in a city full of people that's hustling and bustling. Perhaps tomorrow I can just leave a bit earlier. And he gets to work and he's greeting people. Oh, good morning. And then when he gets work, he doesn't say, ah, oh. what he says to himself, he says, I'm valued. This is great. I get to do this assignment. I have an opportunity to show myself, to prove my abilities here. And he gets working on his assignment. He's so engrossed in his assignment that the workday goes by quickly. If he doesn't get work, he says, this is great. I get to relax and I'm getting paid all the while. And so he turns on some Roman Zanoni uh, YouTube and he listens so they can keep his mindset fixed in, into, the, into the happiness, into the thinking and gratitude, right? Can you see how this man is probably going to be happy? Can you see how this man 
is going to go home? How is he going to greet his wife when he gets home? You tell me, how is that man who had the good attitude from the morning to the end of his workday, how is he going to greet his wife when he comes home? It's going to be way different. It's not going to be the uh, uh, not even acknowledging people. No, he's going to come in and he's going to see his wife. He's going to give her a big hug, a big kiss. He's going to say, I love you, babe. You know why? Because he's thinking, I have a wife. I'm so grateful. I have a family here. He's focusing on what he has. He's focusing on what he has. As a, as a result, he's cultivating a different attitude. Are you noticing his different attitude? Do you see how this is going to reflect back at him? How everything will go better as a result? How his job will probably go better and his relationship will go better? There are lies being told by healers and life coaches and 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 people who are trying to tell you that the key to happiness is connection to other people. It's, they got it crisscross. I know because there were studies and they correlated that happy people had good connections. And so they were like, oh, that's probably the key to happiness because the studies said there's a correlation, but they missed it. They missed it. But I'm not going to leave you out there like that with the wrong information. So listen carefully. The key to the good relationships is happiness. That's why happy people have good relationships. Not because they had a, they found a relationship and then that made them happy. That's the wrong conclusion from the right research. I'm sorry, folks. It's not the connection. It's the attitude. You cultivate an attitude of gratitude. You become a happy person. And then how will your relationships be? Think about the man in our illustration. He comes in the house, and because of the way, his energy, the way he's greeting his wife, his relationship is going to get better. Scientifically, if relationships have four to one positive interactions, then the relationship will be successful. That's that simple. It's just simple mathematics. If you have if you have any more negative than like one out of five negative experiences or or interactions with your spouse, your relationship is is marked for failure. It's not going to work out. That's just scientific. That's how all the studies line up. It's positive interactions that create the strong relationships. It's positive interactions. You can't have positive interactions if what you say isn't positive. And what you say will be a reflection of what you think. And you can't say positive things if you don't think positive things. So if you think positive things, you will say positive things. If you say positive things, you will have positive interactions. And with positive interactions, you will have good connection and good relationships. But before you even get there, you will feel a sensation in your body that is happiness. Serotonin, oxytocin coursing through your veins, making you feel sublime. That's what I want for you. And that's why I'm telling you the truth. You have the ability, you have the power to make the choice, to flip the switch on of gratitude. I recommend everyone does a gratitude meditation every morning. How do you do that? Take a moment. You can take a moment even right now. And you just think three things that you're grateful for. They can be the simplest things. It can be your ceiling. Aren't you grateful to have a ceiling, a roof on your house? It could be your feet. Aren't you grateful to have feet that work? You can be grateful for your muscles. You can, you can be grateful for your skin. You can be grateful for, for your eyeballs. You can be grateful for your eardrums. You can be grateful if you have clothing, you can be grateful for that. You can be grateful for your covers, for your bedspread, for your sheets. You can be grateful for your mattress. You can be grateful for your carpet. Just think of the simple things that you are grateful for. You can be grateful for your experiences. You can be grateful for your relationship with your creator. You can be grateful for your education. You can be grateful for where you grew up. 
for the country that you were born in, for the city, for the state that you were born in. You can be grateful for your parents or grateful for your children. You can be grateful for for your coworkers or your friends. You can be grateful to be single or to be married. You can be grateful for whatever you have or whatever you've received to have enough health to just get to the gym. You can be grateful. Yeah, the list is endless. So let's do that. Just three things a day. Give each thing about a minute. It'll take you three minutes every morning. It's nothing. And you will cultivate happiness as a result. So try that. Attitude of gratitude. And that's your assignment for the week. Every day, attitude of gratitude. In all of our thoughts, make that dominant. And then this whole group is going to be happy the next time we meet. 